Was there anything that you were told that you didn't really get until you had an experience to sort of confirm it for you? I have to think about that one. And what I'm getting at here is that um, people are often looking for seeing is believing, or there's some sort of proof of, of, you know, I hear that people are talking about this, but I haven't experienced it. So I don't know if I can really trust just the, the chatter. Yeah, I would say the, the idea of time being an illusion. Okay. It's, it's definitely, I mean, today in our collective level of awareness, it's a concept we speak about. But experiencing time as an, as an illusion is, or as a relative reality instead of a fundamental reality, or it, it's a completely different thing. And just to the level I experienced that throughout that meeting of, of, I mean, 12 hours, you know, I didn't know 12 hours passed at all. 12 hours is a long time if we think about 12 hours. But there were certain things that were done in my experience of that meeting that it's almost like the perspective and the level of awareness and the resonance was changed. So the experience changed completely as well. And yeah, I, I would say the illusion of time through experience was a big one because it was always something I spoke about, mm -hmm. but experiencing it is, is different. It's different. Would, would love for you to expand a little bit more if it's possible to explain the you illusion of time. You can't. You, I can explain it, yeah, but you'll you'll never understand the experience until you experience it. it it's just you. There are certain you know how there are certain things that exceed the the limitations of words. It, it's just sure. it's an experience. It's a knowingness. It's a feeling, but it can't necessarily be explained to its fullest extent. But I could talk about the illusion of time conceptually. And to make it super simple, because a lot of people make it very difficult and like this complex idea that blows your mind. And it is very simple on the, on the conceptual level if we, if we explain it the right way. So what is time? Time is the measurement. It's a tool that we created to measure how far and how long it takes for light to travel from point A to point B. That's what time is. So a light year is how long, it, how far light travels in what we call one year in the amount of time, and it's all relative, the amount of time it takes for Earth to go around the sun once. So we call that 365 days. We call right. that one year. So light travels at 186,000 miles per second. The, at that speed, if you were to travel at that speed for one year, you would have traveled the equivalent distance of what science calls one light year. Now that means that if I'm standing one light year away from you, which is 186,000 miles per second times the amount of seconds there are in one year relative to Earth time. If I'm standing that distance away from you and I turn on a light bulb, the light bulb is on, but you're only going to see it turn on one year later because it takes that much time for the light to reach you. So that means that time is relative to where you are, your perspective, your level of awareness, and where you are relative to something else. That's what Einstein spoke about with his theory of relativity or theory of general relativity, showing that time is relative. With that being said, that light bulb that I'm talking about, we can also call the sun or stars. The sun, in terms of its distance, is eight minutes away from us at the speed of light. That means if the sun exploded and shut off right now, we would still have eight minutes of light here on earth. The closest star to us with the exception of the sun is four light years away. That means that when we look at the stars at nighttime, we're looking at the past and the closest we're looking at is four years away because that's the time it takes for that reality, that light, because that's what reality is to reach us. And what I find mind blowing, but so simple, according to that very simple logic of, of light moving is, you know, every other day we hear scientists coming and saying, wow, we found a planet that looks like it has life on it 10,000 light years away. Mm -hmm. And what they're really looking at is the light of a reality 10,000 years ago, even though they're perceiving it in this present moment from earth, 
the light that's reaching us is only reaching us now, but what's happening there, the planet may not even be there. We're just perceiving its light. So with that being said, if we were to stand or teleport hypothetically in, in this moment right here, right now to a star or a planet 3000 light years away from earth, we took a telescope and looked at earth you wouldn't see Earth at the year 2020. You would see Earth in the year 3,000 years before 2020, probably seeing the pharaohs and the Egyptians and the pyramids being built sometime around that. Don't, I mean, different timeline, but you know what I mean. So with that being said, conceptually, until, I mean, that's the best I can do to explain it. But with that being said, that reality of, let's say, the Exodus that long ago, is happening right now somewhere else, according to somebody else's perspective of how long it took that light to reach them. And that's our illusion of time because we're so in this third dimensional reality that we think that this is the only reality that exists. And the truth is, is no, this is just one of an infinite amount of perspectives that exist. What we experience right here, right now is one perspective of an infinite spectrum of light. And based on how we move and where we move, we could go back in time, but we can't change it. And that's where I disagree with science, by the way. That, that was something I was taught as well. If you're standing on that planet 3,000 year, light years away from Earth and you look at Earth and you see the Exodus, you can't change the events of the Exodus. You can only observe them. Because you can only observe that light. You can't interact with it. You can observe it. The future is now created also in the present moment by our freedom of choice of how we choose to create something. There's an infinite amount of possibilities that can happen based on how we exercise and practice our freedom of choice in this present moment. But based on that, we will enter that reality accordingly based on the resonance of our thought, of our words, and of our choice. So in that way, the past and the future, they're both right here. You can observe the past based on where you're standing. 